I read an interesting op-ed by a columnist named Perry Bacon Jr., He's a recent deconvert who spent the piece lamenting the loss of his church community and wishing for a secular alternative. Now, his is a familiar story, of course. He realized years ago that the basis of his religion was probably bullshit, but he liked the church community. It, it had been a big part of his life since childhood, and he was under the impression that it mostly steered people towards moral behavior. So he stayed for a long time. Then along came Trump. And he started to back away and say, wait, how moral is this religion, actually? And about the same time, he learned that somebody in his church wasn't being allowed to lead some group or another because he was gay. And then along came the pandemic, gave him an excuse to stop going to church, and nothing Christianity has done in the interim has given him any excuse to go back. Now, to be honest, from my perspective, it's hard to understand the whole pining for the good old days of going to church thing that is so common among former believers. I mean, I went to church thrice, I think. And in all three instances, it was so deeply unpleasant that I wrote it off altogether, even before I was sure there wasn't a hell. But I get that my experience isn't universal. After all, the primary benefit people cite of religious worship is a feeling of belonging, and I certainly never felt like I belonged in any of those places. So I'll readily concede that Perry Bacon Jr.'s church experience that of an African-American dude from Louisville, Kentucky, whose dad was an assistant pastor for his church, was entirely different from that of a satanic-looking white kid at a Pentecostal church in South Georgia that his girlfriend had clearly dragged him to. That being said, I get the feeling reading the article that he misses church the way I miss going to the video store. Right, but unlike Perry Bacon Jr., I recognize that I'm motivated by nostalgia rather than some inherent positive quality of blockbuster. See, within the column, he acknowledges that there are secular alternatives. He mentions trying out a few Unitarian Universalist churches and finding them to be overwhelmingly white and elderly and lacking in the diverse activities that made church such a social hub for him. He also mentions Sunday Assembly, a concerted effort to create exactly the thing that he's looking for, but dismissed it by simply saying it, quote, has struggled to gain much traction, end quote. He also admits that clubs and neighborhood gatherings serve many of the same functions as churches do, but he writes them off because, quote, none of those gatherings provide singing, sermons, and solidarity all at once, end quote. Which, forgive me, sounds an awful lot like a nostalgic blockbuster customer pointing out that with Amazon Prime, you can't get your movie and overpriced giant Twizzlers in the same place. Now, don't get me wrong. I agree with the overall point that Bacon is making in his piece. I don't think there's anything that atheists can do to make our side of the fence more appealing to the uncommitted nuns than creating community groups to fill the void that's created when people leave church. right? And, and it's something that we're doing emphatically. It's the reason we have skeptics in the pub meetups and Sunday assembly and online groups and conventions and local atheist groups. Hell, it was the impetus to start this podcast. But it's only a sad testament to just how thoroughly religion has co-opted the very concept of community that despite that, it's never enough. See, in the end, Bacon's solution is just better churches because he can scarcely imagine a viable alternative to church even after naming a few. So much so that he literally says that there's a, quote, church-sized hole in American life, end quote. He laments the fact that left-leaning Americans are abandoning churches instead of, quote, reinventing them to align with our 2023 values, end quote. He even spends a few seconds imagining what a church for the nuns might look like, and he, and he describes Sunday assembly pretty much exactly, and then laments the fact that it doesn't exist. And look, I, I can fault Bacon for his reasoning here, but I can't argue with his lived experience. And I think a lot of theological atheists that wouldn't dare wear the A word label are walking a very similar path to his. And when I read it, I see two calls to action. And the obvious one is that we need to redouble our efforts to build communities. We have a lot. We have more than Perry Bacon Jr. realizes, I would imagine, but we're still wildly outnumbered by churches. Person looking for churches can be really specific with their needs. In most of the country, if you're looking for a secular alternative, you've got one option if you're lucky. Right? I doubt we're ever going to outnumber churches, so we need to fight their advantage in variety with ours in inclusion. We need to fight their quantity with our quality. But the other call to action that's hiding in the middle of that is the fact that we need to tear down this bullshit idea that churches have some kind of proprietary right to community. 
It's something they've jealously guarded for centuries, and they still do, so much so that they try to grab the communities that don't belong to them, right? Like they, they try to take over online groups and book clubs and community groups, and oh, can we pray first or whatever, whatever they can get their fucking prayers on. Because on some level, they recognize that any secular alternative to the community that they offer is a threat to their social dominance. You know, Perry Bacon Jr. imagines better churches, but churches are inherently exclusionary, right? And notice that he didn't call for a mosque for the nuns. He's modeling his very concept on his Protestant upbringing as though there's something inherently valuable, not just in community, but in that community. That in some way or another, the way that Christians did things was the correct way to do it. And that idea is so often the poison pill that dooms the secular alternatives. The nuns don't need an alternative church. They need an alternative to church. And that's what we need to give them. 